The following interview was conducted with Wodiki. Wokedi. Wodiki. Wokedi. Wokedi. Adika. A uh, graduate student in computer science who received his degree in July of this year from the Department of Computer Science for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Friday, June, July 9, 2010 in Stewart Center, the University of Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Good afternoon and thank you very much. Uh, let's start off, tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents in early years. I was born in Washington, D.C. My parents migrated to the states from Emo State, Nigeria in the early 80s, and I was raised for the first seven years of my life in Washington, D.C., and then we moved to the suburbs of the D.C. area, more specifically Prince George's County, Maryland, and that's where my immediate family resides right now. Okay. Do you have any, any siblings? Yes, I have two brothers, one sister. Okay. And tell us about grade school and a little bit about high school there. Mm-hmm. So, wow. Um, I went to Robert Frost Elementary School. Okay. Was that in Washington or in Maryland? That, that, that was in Maryland. So okay. in, in Washington, D.C., I went to Cleveland Elementary School. Um, and uh, after my stint at, at Robert Frost Elementary, I went on to, to Robert Garden. And um, there I was uh, encouraged to um, pursue, this, pursue the sciences. Good. And after that point, I ended up going to Eleanor Roosevelt High School. I believe it was one of these schools that was built and it had a science and technology program that, that was created during the John F. Kennedy era to try to compete with the Russians in, in sort of building up our science, technology, engineering, and math right. folks so we, so we can better compete. And um, it, it was one of the better schools you could go to in uh, Prince George's County and in Maryland as a whole. And I ended up going to that school, and I was it was it was there where I I, I realized that uh, I really had a, a passion for computers, and it actually stemmed from after my ninth grade year, they instituted this policy where you had to choose an academy that you had to participate in to attend the school and. As part of the academy, you would take some designated courses that would help you, uh, or not necessarily help you, but help prepare you for your sure. occupation. And it would, you would get a certificate of completion with your diploma by the time you completed these designated courses and your diploma. This is in high school. Right? Yeah, this is, a, this is all in high school. Okay. And so for me, at the time, I, I, I wasn't completely sure what I wanted to do, but. I decided I wanted to be a stockbroker, and then being a stockbroker, the way they had it set up, they had a list of occupations, and you pick the occupation that you want, and then that was indexed to a particular academy, and the academy that that occupation was indexed to was uh, the Business and Information Management Academy, and as part of the Business and Information Academy, Management Academy, I had to take some computer courses, and through that, I was introduced to computers, and it was also during the dot-com boom era, so 99, uh, 2000, you know, that, that from 95 to 2000, I think, was the dot-com boom. And so it was a lot of excitement around computers, and I felt that I was doing well in those courses, and I figured, you know, it gave me the confidence and, and, and sort of reinforced my interest and enhanced my interest in computers, and so I chose to do that instead of going the business route. Uh, when it was time for me to apply to college. Okay. When did you apply? You went to the University of Maryland, correct? Mm-hmm. Did you apply uh, any other schools or? This so, this yes, is I'm sure I did. Oh, did uh, you? Okay. But this one and the, it was in, in just on the state. Right, right. Okay. So um, actually, I had a friend, I had a colleague. So in, in, in doing the research to determine what occupation I wanted to do, sure. there, there was a website called Princeton Review where you could look at occupations and determine what a person did all day. And um, one of the, as I decided that I wanted to do computers, I was doing research on hardware engineers versus software engineers versus computer programmers. What, what, what type of stuff do they do? Right. And I discovered somehow through that process that you can get a PhD or you could become a doctor in something other than medicine. And so I didn't realize that a, you know, a PhD could be associated with virtually any subject. And so 
it was around that time, I was like, wow, I want the terminal degree, right? Like, you can get a degree, and there's no more degrees you can get after that. You've reached the pinnacle within that the subject, top, right? within that field. So, yeah, it definitely interested me sure. um, at that point. And then, almost serendipitously, I ran into a friend of mine who told me about this program called the Meyerhoff Scholarship Program, a program that was seeded by a Baltimore philanthropist called Robert Meyerhoff, Robert and Jane Meyerhoff. And um, this program had the goal of increasing the number of underrepresented minorities who go on to get PhDs in the science, technology, engineering, and math fields. And it just seemed like a, a perfect fit for what I wanted to do in some sense. It was like, well, and you I were good at it. Right. So it became my sort of number one priority to try to make sure uh, I, I positioned myself to be uh, in that program. And I, I eventually uh, joined that program uh, at UN, UNBC, and um, it was probably one of the best decisions I ever made. I'm pleased with it. Did you live on campus then? Tell us about campus life. What was it like? So campus life, so <laughs> the Meyerhoff program is unique, right? So tell, uh, well, for researchers, tell us a little about that. Program. So so the, the program started because Robert Meyerhoff, he, he was an MIT graduate. Is he still living? Yes. Oh, okay. And he was displeased by the number of black men who were uh, obtaining uh, advanced degrees and, and who were in the STEM fields, basically. And so the program started out just for black males. And it was headed up by uh, the president, the current president of UNBC, Dr. Freeman Robowski. And he, you know, I, 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 from what I understand, I believe Robert Meyerhoff didn't anticipate it becoming this sort of an, this this program that would continue for years and years. I think he just wanted to donate some money and fund some scholarships for some for some uh, African American males. But it turned out that you know, Dr. Robowski had a sort of a bigger vision that this could be a pipeline that could last for years and years and years and years. And so they designate the uh, classes with the number. So the first class to receive that Meyerhoff funding was called M1s. I'm an M13, and we're up to like M20s now. So um, it's, it's a program that's been successful. Obviously, they've been able to get funding from NSF and other organizations and things like that because um, the, the program has been successful in helping underrepresented minorities get PhDs, and, and they go off and do wonderful things. So um, they, they, they did a... Uh, a uh, fantastic job in maintaining the longevity of the program, obviously. But going back to answer your question about campus life, uh, bef between high school and college, there's that summer. And what they try to do, they have a summer bridge program where they try to get you acclimated to campus. Sure. Right? So they effectively force you to live together with all the other miles. Because what, essentially what happens is they, they blue chip the best students from high school from across the country. And oh, put it's, them not, all it's not restricted just to Maryland. I mean, and others. Oh, right. So problem. any people from anywhere, but obviously because you know it's 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 in Maryland, and right. uh, there's there's definitely uh, a lot of people who are local who attend sure. uh, UNBC uh, and and the Meyerhoff program. Now the Summer Bridge program was designed to sort of get students acclimated and, and sort of help them uh, get to know one another. And we took some courses that they had us take a calculus course and uh, African American studies course over the summer. And uh, you basically had something to do every day. Your days were jam packed. And, you know, you, but you somehow managed to get through that experience. And by the time the semester rolled around, you were, you were ready, right? You, you, you uh, were comfortable with campus, you weren't trying to figure out where things were. You had been overloaded during the summer because trying to do calculus in six weeks is not uh, is not advisable. And then trying to do another course on top of that not advisable. And then some of us had uh, physics and chemistry courses that were at the, that were ha all happening at the same time. So trying to do that all in the summertime, you, you really felt the. You really felt the grind, and so when the semester came around, you said, "Wow, I have so much free time." You, you really realized how much free time you had, and um, I, many of us took advantage of that. But you know, they, they gave us tips and tricks and, and ways to leverage one another to ensure that we all did really, really well. Um, 
you know, there was a, a girl that I worked with in virtually every computer science class, Kyla McMullen. She's currently a, getting a PhD in computer science at University of Michigan. And um, we worked together, and that was, you know, one of the key components of, of, of that program was teaching us that, hey, well, yeah, you're smart, but if you could work with other people and learn how to work with other people, you could be more successful. You could do some extraordinary things. And, you know, I graduated 4.0 summa cum laude from uh, UMBC, and she graduated 3.97, you know, from UMBC. Mm -hmm. So it's not a coincidence, you know, that, nice. that, that, you know, that occurred, you know. So um, it was because we had the support of one another. So if I didn't understand something and she did, she would help me. So chances are between the two of us, or sometimes there might be a third person or fourth person between the two or between the two or four of us, one of us would know the answer, or someone would know how to figure it out or know the appropriate approach or know that one of us were, we sort of had a misunderstanding or a misperception and um, we were both dedicated. And so it, it, it made for- uh, Very an, pleasurable, enjoyable, right? Right. Worked out well. It's a work out really well. Did you live? You lived on campus then. Yeah. So the yeah. Did they? Did the, all the the fellows, the scholars, stay together? I mean, you. So the first like, year, you like the learning communities that have it Purdue. Right. So for the first year, you had to live together for that first year, and then after that first year, or not necessarily live together, but we had to live in the same dormitory. Oh, okay. So okay. after that first year, you had the flexibility to live where you wanted, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it it, it, it was it was. I had never been around so many smart people before, and I think that that also helps. Right. So, um, you know, being around on people like that, even if it's happening by, uh, you know, sort of osmosis, if you will, right, you, you, you will become smarter just by, by virtue of you being around these, these right. intelligent people. So it, it, it helps a That's great deal. very good. Uh, did you do anything during the summer did you, uh, at school? Or? Yeah, so what they, they encouraged oh. us as Meyer Hobbs to um, – make sure you get summer experiences because, you know, you, you don't want to uh, waste away your summers. So summers are, are a great opportunity to help you figure out what you want to do down the line. So as a, as a, as a technical person um, in computer science, I wanted to try to get a flavor of everything. So I did an internship at the Army Research Lab and, you know, sort of got a feel for what government work would be like in some sense. Sure. And I did some work with um, Yale University the following. Uh, summer and that was just a tremendous, tremendous that's, experience. It's um, a nice compliment to what you're taking in the school then. And it gives you a little bit of a feel for career right. paths and things. Right. It worked out really well. Then. Right. So um, it gave me a feel for what graduate school would be like. Yeah. And, and then after that I worked at a FFRDC, uh, a federally funded research and development center, uh, MITRE Corporation, which sort of gave me a feel of kind of almost industry but oh, not quite and not quite government so it was somewhere in the middle and uh, I spent three summers there and a semester there and so mm -hmm. you know I had, a, I had a good time while I was at MITRE Corporation so you know all of those experiences sort of helped me determine you know what I like what I didn't like yeah. what aspects do I like you know so uh, all of that was extremely useful. Right. Did, then after you finished your graduate, did, had you uh, decided also to, to go on grad, grad, do graduate work? So it wasn't that clear of a decision. Okay. Um, okay. When I uh, when it was time for me to graduate, I I wasn't I was on the fence about whether or not I wanted to sure. go into industry, just you know get into one of these fast track programs, or go to graduate school. And so what ended up happening there was um, I had a position lined up with one company. And something happened where a lot of people started to get fired. And so I was transferred from one division of the company to another division of the company. And my full-time position turned into a summer internship. And I wasn't, uh, I wasn't amenable to changing from a full-time to a summer internship after, you know, I'm graduating with a whole bachelor's degree and I'm going right. to go and take an internship. Doesn't, it didn't. It didn't sit well with me, and so I said, "That's the push I needed to fall on the graduate school side of the fence." So I, I said, <coughs> "Going to focus completely on trying to go to graduate school." However, by the time I made that decision, the graduate school application cycles were pretty much over, right? So I, you know, I tried to apply to a lot of places um, that were on the East Coast for whatever reason. I just had a I didn't want to come to the Midwest. I didn't want to come to the West Coast. And so I just wanted to stay on the East Coast. And uh, my department chair at the time, uh, at Charles Baltimore, Nicholas. At the, huh? at the university? 
Yes. Yeah, yeah well, with the UMBC. My department chair at UMBC, he went to the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, and he said, had I considered any Big Ten schools? And I already knew that the girl that I've been working with, for example, she was already accepted and planning on attending University of Michigan. And I had a couple of friends who were going to Purdue University. And so I said, based on that, you know, <laughs> Purdue University and University of Ann Arbor, they, you know, I mean, I already knew that, you know, these, these were reputable institutions. Sure. And so, and also coming from the Meyerhoff background, knowing that support is critical to your success, I was like, well, I already sort of have a support system going out there. So instead of me sort of going out there alone in some sense. And, um, the, um, Did you come out before and then talk to some people before you decided to come yeah, in? Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, with with you've never been to the Midwest before, though, had you? I've been here for a conference. There oh, was okay. a there was a conference back in two thousand one that I can't actually get to Indianapolis for. Okay. So uh, there's a NSB conference, National Society of Black oh, Engineers. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that's actually where I first heard about Purdue is the National Society of Black Engineers. That was founded here, in right. Minnesota, which right. is really great. And yeah. that plaque is so wonderful that they've got there. Yeah. You know, really nice. Um, the, um, but yeah, okay, so um, I did, when I decided what schools I wanted to apply to, my department chair at UMBC and my operating systems professor, Anupam Joshi, he graduated from Purdue's computer science program with his PhD. In, so they wrote me recommendation letters, and he was, and Joshi, Professor Joshi, was the last person to submit his uh, recommendation letter to Purdue. And the day he submitted it, Purdue came back with an offer that day. And but the timeline that they wanted me to respond with was uh, too short. So I said, I need to see the school, I need to visit, and all this. And so <laughs> they uh, they they complied, and they brought me out, and they just seemed very genuine and authentic, and and wanted me to be here. They just seemed really. Uh, eager and, and to, to have me sort of join their department and uh, you know it made me feel you know special right. and based on that you know based on that experience and uh, it was it was kind of a clear decision that you know I should come to Purdue um, so the, the visit really uh, sealed the deal for me uh, and then the fact that they were able to sort of rearrange for me you know it was a, you know, I made this request like no I, I can't respond until you know I actually see the school and talk to people and you know get a feel for the school so um, yeah uh, the department did a, a great job in sort of um, uh, per showing me how much they, they they cared for me as an individual so and what the program was, and they explained all of that and things of that sort. So you knew a little bit what the program would be right. too, which is so the combination worked out really well for you. Yep. And then you then you came on. Where, um, when you first came here, whereabouts did, did you start teaching? Now, when you first came, did you just gonna come for the masters, or had you decided you wanted to do the whole nine yards? Yeah. So I decided I came here with the PhD intention. Okay. But I was still a little, sure. you know, it's, it's still it's very difficult to say with 100% certainty, you know, at, at the very beginning of the process at least, but I, I did have a PhD in tech when I first came in, and um, it, uh, it, it sort of, so, okay, what was the se other part well, of the question? Uh, what, what, when you first came here, what did you start, were you doing a teaching? Oh, no, I wasn't teaching. Um, okay. I came in with fellowships, so I had, okay. I had fellowships that would last four years, but then I turned down one of the fellowships, and so I had fellowships that lasted for three years. So I didn't have to teach my first three years here um, because I was on fellowship. And um, I started teaching my fourth year, fourth and fifth year. I, I did TA ships. Yeah. Tell us a little about the um, class that you taught. You okay, so um, I started my first sem my my first semester of teaching. I taught a. Um, well, I was a teaching assistant for I didn't actually have to teach. I didn't have a teaching requirement there. I was basically a person that students came to for sure. questions and graded assignments and things like this. Um, it was a graduate level databases course. Um, that was the first semester. And then the rest of the semesters, the three subsequent semesters, I had a teaching requirement. So I had a recitation that I taught and graded projects and all of this. Sure. And that was the uh, introductory computer science course. Uh, for people intending or wanting to be computer science majors. So that was taught in the Java programming language, and we, we went over ba basically a lot of the, you know, foundational computer science concepts that one would need to move forward in the major. 
right. When you came, they were not in their new buildings, the Lawson building. Was, right. Was that, was we that were, under construction? It was, it was, yeah, yeah, I believe it was under construction. Because um, you were in the, what's now, Haas Hall. Right. right. Okay. We, were, we were in Haas. The old, the more, or the old gymnasium there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's sort of nice. You yeah. Know? And uh, like some of the old things, it's kind of sort of matches and mixes in with the others. Right. Yeah. Um, the graduate studies, the student association, you tell us a little about, you remember, you were the president? I was the Black. president of the Black Graduate okay. Association for about a, a year. Okay. So I think um, in my first year, I was just a committee member and all this. Uh-huh. And then I think in my second year, I wanted to focus on qualifying exams. And so... Um, I sort of yeah. neglected that, and, and I think that sort of, and then in my third year, I became the president, I think. So um, it, was, it was an interesting experience. It, it, was, it was interesting to see how things work um, at different levels. And one of the things that I did find out is that I don't particularly care for bureaucracy. So there's a lot of red tape and things like that, and I, and I started to see some of that. And so, um, you know, I was, I was very quick to, to vacate my position uh, after that year was up. So. Well, is it how large is the organization? Well, today I have no idea. Oh, um, no, but uh, when I was uh, a member, that was one of those things that we, we, we can never really nail down because it depends on how you count it. Um, you know, they, they could be, I think it was roughly 200 members, something like that. But um, the people that you would see on a regular basis would be like 15. Yeah, so it's hard to. Yeah. Some come to some things and some don't. It's right. difficult. I understand what you're saying. Um, campus life, did any other activities that you engaged in while you were here? That you can recall? Mm. Is this campus as large as the one that you did your undergraduate work No. Uh, this campus is far larger than. Uh, <laughs> uh, that this, probably this, resonated yeah. with you when you came. So, yeah, that, you know, it was, uh, you know, <laughs> UBC is about 10. Fifteen thousand at best oh, you know, okay. total. Every everything, and so you know this this school is far more. Um, you know, it's really stretched out a yeah, lot. It's, yeah, it's, I it's, know. it's a it's huge. It's grown a lot campus. since I've been here. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a huge campus. So you know, it's it's difficult to, to make that to make that comparison. Um, I guess in way of uh, other activities here. Um, yeah, I took an entrepreneurship course in a May master, and um, after that course, you know, I, I sort of well, I, ha- I had this sort of epiphany of how uh, tractable it was for an, you know an individual with an idea to start a company, and so it's a good course to take, and and, and yeah, I, just preaching to the choir, um, and uh, I, I chose to uh, to enter into a. Uh, business plan competition or a pitch competition where you would give a pitch and people would vote and sure. you would win right. and all this and I, I sent it to what was then my old entrepreneurship professor uh, because I had already been through the Maymester course and he, he you know, asked me if, if I was serious about it he would be willing to be my angel investor and so I had to ask myself a question of whether or not I was serious about starting this and so I said yeah I'm serious and uh, we started it and um we were able to place into the regional competition for what was called uh, Incubicity, which was this initiative to try to um, encourage entrepreneurship in North Central Indiana. And um, we got to the regional, I guess, and you know we didn't, you know, we didn't place in that. So uh, it got to a point where uh, we're implementing the marketing strategy and all this, and trying to get people to sign up to the website, and um, it, it was beginning to take effort to the point where it was I was either going to have to drop out of the PhD program and do this full time or I was going to have to stop the, doing the business and uh, focus on the PhD and so uh, I chose to focus on the PhD obviously and uh, sort of uh, allow you know this sort of this, this entrepreneurial bug that I have to reemerge later okay. so you have to make a decision right. you can't do both at right. the same time right <laughs> I discovered that <laughs> right um, the two publications I was going to ask you about, one is that that's going to be the IIE, and then the one that you gave at the 5th Richard Tapio Celebration Diversity Computer Conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, what sort of organization is that? And also okay, the paper. So, so the, 
the paper um, for the IEEE is it's accepted with minor revision. So it's um, I'm just waiting to hear back on sure. you know, when and what what I need to do to sort of right. finalize that. The Tapia Celebration of Diversity Conference is a conference that's held every two years for computer scientists, and uh, on every off year, it's held for mathematicians and it's for underrepresented minorities um, in the STEM fields. Um, hmm. Well, underrepresented minorities in math, and then the the the, the year that I attend, it's it's for the computer scientists. So they they, they flip on and off mm -hmm. um, year to year. Um, it's 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 really trying to that that organization really tries to encourage and, and help and, and give advice to uh, people who are interested in, in helping underrepresented minorities sort of navigate the PhD process. And yeah. It's a uh, it's a useful utility and it and it offers a venue for people to sort of give feedback on their ideas, present their ideas, have poster presentations, submit papers, get published because that you know that paper would appear in um, IEEE digital um, uh, library, so people can find it on the web and things like that. So it's a it's good topic. Maximizing security on a limited budget. Right. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, not so, easy to do. Right, it, it is not easy to do, and so in that in that paper, um, it, it's based on so there's this idea of having security metrics, measuring security, and uh, we use this special type of security metric called attack graph based security metrics, and using those security metrics or using one of those security metrics in that particular paper, you can maximize. Your, your your security level based on that metric with respect to the budget that you have to protect your network. So um, it was well received at the conference. Good. Very good. That's nice to hear. Makes you feel good too. Absolutely. The experience during your grad program, do you want to make a couple of comments? One was that, that software theoretic, you were the director of research. Right. So yeah. uh, there, um, my primary goal was to put together uh, grants and, 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 and and apply for uh, what are called small business innovation and research grants. And when sometimes they may get requests for collaborations from other people, and so I would look at it from a scientific or technical standpoint to say, is it worthwhile? Should we move forward with this um, or not? And uh, we would try to come up with designs. Another thing we would do, come up with designs for trying to build prototypes. Um, to kind of prove out some of these concepts that we have. And the companies really, uh, they do consulting uh, for the government, and they wanted to build a product for themselves. And so the, their idea was to have a researcher come in and do some research and, and, and build a product for them. And so then they can sort of eventually move out of the service business, or maybe they can keep the service business but have another growing product side as well. So that was their aim, that was their, that was their goal, and that was sort of my objective there. Did you enjoy it? It was it was fun. It, it was a worthwhile experience. Yeah. So um, something a little bit different than you've been doing, and right. you realize the challenge of grants and putting people together and all of that. You right. Know, now you know. Right. And then you were the e exposure founder. Is that right. The so company? yeah. So so yeah. That was the company that I, that I founded uh, with the help of uh, my entrepreneurship professor Hank Fieser. Um, he was a Purdue alum. He used to go to Purdue, and he. You know, he got his PhD in management and all this, and then he came back and he's teaching. And he had a, a number of entrepreneurial ventures. Sure. Um, Is the company still going? Exposure? No. Oh, okay. So you know, I stopped Exposure in like in late 2009. Oh, okay. Uh, because I just wasn't focused on it anymore. I was focused on my PhD, but Exposure was focused on trying to help uh, innovators uh, communicate their value proposition via video. So you can think it's uh, like a, a YouTube, but for people who want to demonstrate via video what their value proposition is to potential customers. So it's sort of like a trade show sure. um, online, but it's, it would be virtually free for them um, because going to a trade show has a lot of cost and opportunity costs associated with right. attending, you know, you know, we have a registration free that's you know over a thousand dollars, and you have to pay for accommodation, you have to pay for food, and then it's time lost on work and all this. So it was supposed to be a, a cheaper alternative. And so, what I, the initial plan was, or the thought was, that I would uh, I would 
use a lot of these companies that were in a research park. And um, there was the uh, there was the uh, the director of research park, um, Tim Peoples. He you know he came to our entrepreneurship classes and he talked about helping uh, Purdue students and helping them sort of uh, uh, succeed and all this and doing what he can. And he was not very helpful <laughs> when it came time because you know the idea was that I would see the website with these companies who are very innovative right here in our own backyard because nobody knows about them you know you don't have a lot of you don't even have a lot of Purdue students applying to these companies because they simply don't know that they that they exist right. so um, I thought that you know it would be uh, relatively easy but uh, then people's was not very responsive to um, me sort of recording uh, companies values proposition whatever that may sure. be for them so um, I didn't get a lot of help there, so that turned into me having to do it manually by myself. I had to go to each company there instead of him sort of broadcasting to, to companies that may, may be interested or anything like that. So um, that took a lot of time because I was the only person for, in, in the company, right? So the whole company was sort of going to <laughs> to another company trying to convince them uh, to, to, to sign up to, to the website so, so they can get more exposure. And uh, it was it, it got to a point where it was just not practical for me to continue uh, doing that. It's a lot more than you expected, right? Yeah, putting into it right. Uh, what about family? Uh, yeah, you had, uh, you had some brothers. If they everybody's coming for the commencement. Correct. Okay. Everybody's coming. Um, my mother, my grandmother, um, my sister, my brother, his girlfriend, and a family friend. Is coming so seven people total and, and, and my little brother as well. So um, it sh it should be a, it should be a fun time. They'll they'll come in on Friday. Uh, the commencement is on Saturday morning. They'll stay. We'll have lunch and then they'll go back off to Indy Airport. Okay. Um, do you have any special interests or hobbies? My my, my passion is entrepreneurship. So I just love reading about it, and innovation, and all this. Super. So, Sounds good. Um, any awards or that you got since you've been here? Well, so I've, I've gotten an award for um, being an outstanding teaching assistant. Very good. And um, That's very nice. I've gotten, you know, I've, I've received the Purdue Doctoral Fellowship. And I've gotten the Department of Homeland Security Fellowship. I mean, all this stuff that's on my, my CV resume, you know, I can't remember all of it. There you <laughs> go, right. Okay. Do you have a Purdue tradition that comes to mind? A Purdue tradition? Like, like football, anything special that, how about the, bo like the Boilermaker special? The little engine that goes around, you see that. Maybe if I were here for undergrad, I would, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would have. How about an outstanding people. event? An that outstanding like event. Probably have more. You can have more than one. Mm. Maybe it's coming up in uh, in August. Well, you know, I participated in the commencement activities when I got my master's degree. My mother came up for that, and good. Um, that was that was that was a good moment. It, it was a, it was a time where she she could you know at least see that. I was doing something, <laughs> and it was materializing <laughs> into something real, right? Because I'm, all she knows is I'm in Indiana for a long time, and she doesn't and see I'm me And I'm in Baltimore, lot. right? I'm right. in Maryland. Yeah, yeah. She's, in, she's in, you know, just outside of D.C. and Maryland, and so, you know, she doesn't know what I'm doing. So, but, oh, wow, he, you know, he's graduated. He's been doing something, obviously, <laughs> right? So <laughs> They're all thanking him for doing it, right? Right. Okay, now that you got your Ph.D., uh, the next stage. So the next stage right now, so... Initially, the game plan was to stay uh, on the company software theoretical director of research. Um, however, right now, it's 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 becoming evident that they won't be able to fund the research and, and development division. So, I've been taking interviews elsewhere. And so, for example, Wednesday I just came back from uh, Boston and I interviewed with MIT Lincoln Labs, and I have a phone interview actually right after this uh, with uh, Northrop Grumman and. Uh, Microsoft is contacting me, uh, or they should be contacting me within a week um, for an interview. And so it's, you know, I've right. just been sort of... You're moving more in the direction of industry rather than in academe and teaching? Right. Okay. Um, I, I don't I don't foresee myself being a, a okay. tenured faculty member. Um, I'm just not, I don't, I don't have the inclination for it. I think my, my, my value system is different from... Sure. that of those in academia. 
But even you could do, sometimes you can do part-time or you know, adjunct, college, adjunct, adjunct or something of that sort, in, in line with it, just to, to talk to some people and things of that sort. Yeah, I haven't ruled it out in right. that sense. So but make a good combination. Right. right. In closing, anything that I forgot to ask or anything that you'd like to say? Or think we hmm. You're going to be keeping in touch with Purdue. Yeah. The games or whatever. <laughs> the boiler makers, right? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll I, see. I right? mean, you're right. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't promise that. But um, but it's a, it, um, it's a possibility. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, 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 it's possible. Sure. You know, everything is possible, you know. Um, hmm. But uh, last comments. Um, I, I do think, you know, I used to question – whether or not I made the right decision coming to Purdue, right? Because, uh, for example, when I was considering graduate schools, um, I wanted to go, you know, I was thinking about, you know, the big schools, you know, MIT, you know, Stanford, all this, and MIT's emerging technology program said, yeah, we're interested in you, but we ran out of funding, so just wait a semester. And I was like, I could sit out a semester and maybe get the funding, you know, to, to go to MIT, which would be cool. And but then I was like, I don't want to sit around for a whole semester doing nothing, you know. And so I was like, I Time don't. is of the essence. Yeah. And so I said, no, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to hurry up and it start. I want to be somewhere, you know, when it, when it, when the fall starts. And so um, I always, you know, question like, well, should I just wait it and try to go to Stanford or my two years or like that? And you know, in hindsight, I feel like I, I could have made a better decision. Um, I think. With the combination of you know the entrepreneurial experience that I got right. here, is I probably wouldn't have been able to get anywhere else. And um, the type of mentors I've been able to get here, um, I probably wouldn't have been able to get anywhere else. So um, I think <laughs> it's it's oftentimes very difficult to see moving forward, you know, whether or not you want, you're making the right decision. But always, you know, looking back. In the rearview mirror, it's always makes perfect sense. Right. Good. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you for Thank this. You. Okay.